Hey guys, five attendees already. All right, all right, six. Come on, keep going, guys. Keep going. In the meantime, I will appreciate if you use the question section to tell me if you can properly hear me and see me. Uh, although I have like a very clean picture of what you're supposed to see right here. Um, yeah, I assume you have to see our big and beautiful Forex Bolt logo as well as my pretty face <laughs> next to it uh, eventually. So opening the questions. Uh, so Paul says, uh, can hear, I assume this is. All right, let me open the question section in a, in a separate, yeah. All right, everything is clear here in Boston. Hey, greetings to Boston, Jamie. Uh, happy about that. <laughs> I'm currently located in uh, Bulgaria, the capital, Sofia. Weather is a little bit shady right over here, but this is totally not an obstacle for us to conduct a wonderful webinar today. Yeah, exactly, Sofia. <laughs> Uh, and uh, do you know where is uh, Bulgaria, Jamie? Sofia? <laughs> uh, all right. We have Luis from Peru over here. <laughs> On your list of places to visit. That's a very good point. Uh, by the way, from Europe, there are extremely cheap flights today. Uh, to Bulgaria, not only today, but I mean nowadays. Uh, so we get a lot of tourists over there. <laughs> uh, hey, Elia, nice to see you. Long time no see in a webinar session. As you've probably seen, guys, I basically do the live analysis sessions. Uh, we have a visitor from uh, Saudi Arabia as well. Greetings to Saudi Arabia. So uh, I'm basically involved in the live analysis sessions, but from time to time I decide to do a webinar. <laughs> so we will not lose the spirit. Uh, and I believe that this is a very useful approach. Uh, furthermore, I'm preparing also eventually some other guest instructors from time to time that, are, that will be able to join. You probably, most of you know Victor Nelstroyev, uh, who is like a very knowledgeable person in the area of forex trading. Uh, he conducted a few of the last webinars. So uh, I hope you're having good time with him uh, as well. So I suggest that we wait like a couple or three more minutes to see how many people uh, like uh, are gonna join more, to wait for some more people. And uh, then uh, I suggest that we continue with uh, our webinar which is going to be about uh, price action in forex trading by the way i got uh, i got inspired uh, of this topic from one of the comments uh, in our private trading group uh, some of you guys i believe requested this topic and i was like hey let's do this you know and i believe somebody else requested uh, manual back testing i think was the topic so I assume that this is going to be the next topic at the end of the month because as you guys know we're conducting a couple webinars per month, couple live webinars every month, uh, which is a feature for your convenience. So all right, so I'm going to open my economic calendar and I'm going to go to the most important events, uh, same way as I usually do. Um, hmm. What did we have over there? All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. So the European Union Consumer Price Index was announced on Monday at the same as expected rate at, uh, of 1.5% uh, unchanged, uh, which is not likely to have like a big impact of the euro-related forex pairs. On Tuesday, we had the building permits from the United States at 1.3 million, uh, which is better than expected because the forecast was for 1.22 million uh, building permits. Oh, Wednesday, yesterday was a pretty busy day. 
By the way, retail sales in the United States, uh, in the, in Great Britain, I apologize, were announced at the better than expected rate of uh, 1% on 0.2% forecast and 0.6% previous value, which means that uh, the retail sales has increased in the United Kingdom. No surprise in my opinion. Existing home sales in the United States at the world an expected rate of 5.35 million on 5.46 million forecast. Not that of a big difference. However, it's still worse than expected. Uh, the big bank event, of course, yesterday, crude oil inventories, one of the big bank <laughs> events from the yesterday's trading session was the crude oil inventories at the United States at the worse than expected rate of 4.591 uh, uh, million barrels on 3.493 million barrels, worse than expected, more than expected. And this is probably the big band uh, announcement from yesterday, which is the United States interest rates that were announced at the same as expected rate of 1.25%, unchanged as expected. No surprise, but this was not an obstacle for the euro dollar to get crazy again and to create that big of a bearish candle <laughs> breaking out of the bullish channel that we have been like discussing eventually during the past, how much, three months? So, yeah, that's a thing, in my opinion. Uh, all right, what else did we have? Uh, gross domestic product in New Zealand at 0.8%, as expected, which is an increase with 0.2 compared to the previous release of 0.6%. Uh, uh, and today we had the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index for September, United States, of course. Uh, at 23.8 on 17.2 uh, forecast. So later in the day, I think it's later in the day, eventually, let me see what is my time zone, currently the one that I'm, GMT minus format, uh, ta -ta -ta, give it. Yeah, in 20 minutes actually, I think, if I'm not wrong, is it Thursday today? Yeah, it is Thursday today. In 20 minutes, we're going to get the the speech of the European Central Bank President, Mario Draghi, which is likely to have strong impact on the euro dollar. All right, guys. Basically, these were the important economic events that already happened. Tomorrow, we're going to have a couple more speeches of Mario Draghi, as well as some uh, uh, CPI and retail sales data coming from Canada. Also, the UK Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is going to have another uh, another speech uh, as well, Theresa May. Uh, so these are events that are very likely to cause high volatility with uh, the euro dollar. All right, so I suggest that we proceed now with our webinar. So I'm simply going to take off my face with, with that magic trick I, I usually do. And now you're not supposed to see me anymore. And you need to have, you, you should have like a clean picture of our Forex Bolt logo. Before we proceed with the webinar, I would like you uh, to spend like uh, a minute going quickly through our disclaimer, uh, which is a standard procedure. And I would like also to, to remind you and to emphasize that everything you are going to hear during this webinar is uh, simply general information and uh, general advice. All right. In the meantime, I'm going to go through the economic calendar as well uh, again. Uh, yeah, also tomorrow we're going to have German manufacturing PMI for September, something that I missed. And I see in the calendar it says Saturday holiday in Japan. Autumn uh, uh, Exinox, I believe, is how you read this. Uh, really? <laughs> Saturday is holiday in Japan. What a surprise. All right, then. So I'm going to proceed with uh, our topic, which is uh, price action in Forex trading. And this is the plan of the webinar that we're going to follow today. We're going to review some interesting points about what is price action in Forex, 
Also, we're going to talk about the important price action components like support and resistance, trends, candlesticks, and chart patterns. Uh, another important point about ascending tops and bottoms and descending tops and bottoms, which, uh, in my opinion, are crucial to know when talking about uh, discovering uh, potential price reversals eventually. Also, we're going to spend some more time on some of the most important candle patterns as well as uh, some of the most important chart patterns and we're going to discuss some psychological factors behind the price action in forex trading so now let's proceed with the first point of this webinar which uh, reveals some information around what is price action in forex trading so the most important thing that you need to know is that price action is a form of technical analysis in forex trading. This is actually the, the baseline of the technical analysis, the most important fundamental part of the technical analysis, which every, contact, every technical analysis trader needs to be familiar with. Uh, so price action forex trading uh, counts on trading based on price data. This means that price action identifies, relies on uh, analyzing the current price data and uh, like eventual potential outcomes uh, based on events that have already happened on the chart. The price action trading also does this by analyzing the psychological factor behind forex trading because forex traders uh, are actually traders and investors and central banks or, and all the market participants, all the forex market participants are the ones that like indirectly <laughs> determine the, the, the exchange rate of the forex pairs. As you probably most of you know, uh, the exchange rates of the forex pairs are based on the amount of demand, demand and supply uh, related uh, to the two currency pairs and the two economies that represent uh, the two currencies of a currency pair, uh, meaning that the more demand there is uh, for a currency, uh, the more likely is its price to appreciate and uh, versus the another currency. So this is why the psychological factor, uh, this is why the psychological factor is very important and it is like a base of the price action trading. Another thing is that price action uh, counts on clean charts, meaning that no indicators should be used if you're trading with price action. The whole price action analysis is conducted without using additional indicators like, for example, let's say the, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, or let's say the Bollinger Bands, or, or other famous like uh, indicators and the point of price action is to trade on naked charts based only on drawings and shapes and formations uh, that are created on chart without additional indicators that are being calculated internally or externally so currently you're looking at a chart that is not a price action chart <laughs> as you obviously see. So take a look. This is considered as a mess by like the dedicated and the real price action trader. Here we have uh, eventually one, two, three, four, five separated indicators. The most crowded one is the Ichimoku cloud. We also have the parabolic star on chart. Below the chart we have the volume indicator, the stochastic oscillator and the relative strength index indicator. And now you're going to see another chart, which is considered a price action chart, although it is a little bit not, uh, not very detailed. Uh, but still, this is a price action chart. See, no indicators over there, just drawings. We have a channel. We have a bullish pennant. Uh, we have uh, some important psychological levels that are outlined on the chart. Everything is clean. No indicators, no internal or external uh, Indicators. This is actually a real chart uh, of mine, which I am uh, usually using when conducting the live analysis sessions. 
So whoever attends uh, my life analysis sessions in our private trading group is probably familiar with this chart. <laughs> uh, and by the way, the next life analysis session is tomorrow at the same time as the webinar. So tomorrow, 10 in the morning, New York time, is the life analysis session in the private trading group. So don't forget to attend. All right, now let's switch to the next point. So probably the most important components of the price action trading are the support and the resistance levels. These are the basis of the Forex price action trading. And the reason for this is that uh, there is like uh, no like logical way to, uh, to um, analyze a clean chart or to analyze a pattern or, uh, for example, a channel or whatsoever without having into consideration the support and the resistance trading tools. So support and resistance levels uh, are levels which the price action uh, is testing, for example, more than once. These levels could be horizontal or could be inclined. It is a support when the price action is testing a level from above, meaning that if the price is decreasing and it is meeting a specific level, this level is likely to have support functions on the price action. And it is a resistance when the price is testing a level from below. This means that when the price is increasing and it meets a level, which, for example, has some kind of, uh, is likely to have some kind of impact on the chart, this level is likely to put resistance pressures, pressure of the price action. So, example of support and resistance levels are psychological levels. Uh, for example, uh, a level which is likely to be like a turning point on the chart or maybe a level where the volatility increases. I mean, these levels are pretty visible on the chart and you will be able to spot them like uh, pretty easy. Uh, for example, uh, an important psychological level with, uh, say, with, uh, with what? With the American dollar, Japanese yen, for example, is the 100 level. That level where $1 costs 100 Japanese yens. So this is a round number. This means that many investors and other, for example, market participants don't believe that, uh, for example, that the, the, the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair is going to, to increase more than 100 yens per, per dollar. So this is why when the price meets this level, uh, it is likely that many market participants either change their altitude or even like count on their altitude even more, uh, which is a reason for the price, for example, to create a turning point because many traders are likely to cover their trades and, for example, to short because they don't believe that the price action could go beyond that level. So when they cover their trades, uh, they create supply for that respective currency pair, which is likely to result in drop of the price of the American dollar. To explain it other ways, so if you are like uh, long with the euro, Japanese yen, this means that you have bought, um, yeah, you have bought American dollars selling Japanese yens and when the price reaches 100 you decide to sell your American dollars for more Japanese yen that you purchased it for meaning that when you sell the American dollars you create supply for American dollars which is likely to result in a price drop of the American dollar so since investors and traders take this, make decisions based on specific levels on the chart, these levels are very likely to have impact on the price action. So when the price bounces off a support or resistance level, it is very likely that the price changes its direction. And when the price breaks a strong support or a resistance level, 
it is very likely that the price action continues in the same direction. Uh, now I'm going to move to the next important point, which is ascending and descending tops and bottoms. So this is, by the way, a very basic, uh, a very very basic and like primitive component of the price action for trading. However, I believe it is very important because if you, for example, want to say if you want to identify a reversal or something I believe this is the first thing you need to start with so the bullish structures of these are the ascending tops and the ascending bottoms or both together meaning that if the price has been decreasing and you suddenly so, uh, when the price is decreasing you suddenly get on the chart tops that are, that are higher than each other, meaning that they're ascending, or bottoms that are higher than each other, which are ascending bottoms, or you get both patterns again, then you might start approach the opportunity that this might be the beginning of a reversal. It's not necessary to be the beginning of a reversal. However, it is very likely to be if the price demonstrates further reversal altitude. The bearish structures are the descending tops and the descending bottoms, or both together. And they act absolutely the opposite way as the ascending tops and ascending bottoms. Meaning that if the price has been increasing and you suddenly notice like an unusual descending tops or descending bottoms on the price action, or both together, this might appear to be the beginning of a reversal. And if the price action continues demonstrating this altitude, maybe it is time to approach some short opportunities on the chart and now I'm going to show you exactly what I mean take a look at this picture it starts with a bullish trend here it is it is marked with the first the leftmost green arrow on the chart the price increases it increases suddenly take a look now at the orange line suddenly we see descending tops on the chart Notice that in the previous cases we had ascending tops, where the tops have been higher than each other. We have the first one, the second one, the third one. However, the fourth top is pretty much at the same level as the previous top, meaning that the price did not manage to increase that much, and then the next top is lower, meaning that the price action is obviously slowing down. So this could be interpreted as an eventual uh, scenario where the price action is likely to start a reversal and I have also outlined like a very famous chart pattern for you with purple here it is which is the head and shoulders chart pattern uh, we're going to talk more about chart patterns at like later in the webinar it was just like an interesting scenario this is why I wanted to outline it and notice that after the ascending top the price action creates a massive drop so this is how the, for example, I mean the descending tops. This is how the descending tops can foretell that the price action might reverse. Notice that we have the same scenario at the right side of the image. Right after the price started dropping, right after the price dropped, it started increasing again, a bullish trend, smaller bullish trend of course, then descending tops again, meaning that the trend is exhausting and the beginning of a new price decrease. So I have a question over here that comes from Haytham Albana. He says ascending tops and bottoms is the same which is called higher highs and lows. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is the like the, the same name. So ascending tops uh, refers to higher highs uh, and uh, ascending bottoms refers to higher lows. Descending tops refers to uh, descending top refers to descending tops refers to lower highs and descending bottoms refers to lower lows. Yeah, uh, I prefer using ascending tops, ascending bottoms, descending tops and descending bottoms because when you say higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows, uh, this is like, uh, in my opinion, sounds a little bit confusing. Uh, it might lead to misunderstandings and confusions <laughs> like in my case. 
so yeah, basically you're totally right. This is what it is. Now I'm going to proceed with the next component of the price action forex trading, which are the trend lines. So the price is trending when it shows frequent impulses up or in the opposite case down. So the trend is bullish, meaning increasing. When the impulses are increasing, are up, the impulses are bullish. And the trend is bearish if the impulses are bearish, meaning that if the impulses are going down. This means, so during trends, it is very, I mean, not very likely, but during trends, like you're observing either ascending tops and bottoms or descending tops and bottoms. Meaning that if the trend is bullish, the tops and bottoms are ascending. If the trend is bearish, the tops and bottoms are descending. So every trend begins just with couple ascending tops and couple. Uh, I mean, every bullish trend is beginning with just a couple ascending tops and couple ascending bottoms. Every bearish trend starts with couple descending tops and couple descending bottoms. So this is why it is very important that you approach every time you approach the ascending tops and bottoms and descending tops and bottoms because this could be the beginning of a trend or the higher highs and lower lows as uh, as Haytham said. And now I'm going to show you an example of a bearish trend. So take a look at this image. We have a bearish trend which is marked with a bearish trend line, the purple line. And the one, two, and three numbers mark the three tops that form the trend. So notice that during the trend, we have descending top and descending bottoms. Or set with other words, we have uh, lower highs and lower lows pattern. Whoops, I, I changed this by mistake. Here it is. There you go. And suddenly, when the price action breaks the trend line, we have a top that is higher than the previous one, the top at number three, and then the beginning of a new bullish trend, which is actually a reversal. So this is how powerful this approach could be. And now I'm gonna show you some practical examples with simply popping up my chart. Here it is. And I will guys ask you to suggest a forex pair that you would like me to go through and I will simply scroll through the chart of that forex pair and I will try to find some of the patterns that we just dis discussed. So feel free to suggest uh, a forex pair and I would love to proceed with that exact forex pair. Uh, so Paul suggests Canadian dollar Swiss franc. So since this is like a cross I don't think I have it over here, but I'm gonna find. I'm gonna open the market watch, of course. And uh, yeah. So Paul suggested Canadian dollar Swiss franc. Hatem suggested American dollar Canadian dollar. However, we will proceed with Canadian dollar Swiss franc as suggested by Paul. And then during the next practical example session, which is going to be at the end of this webinar, uh, I'm going to use the American dollar, Canadian dollar that was suggested by Hayden. So now I'm going to I'm going to open uh, the market watch on my platform, uh, and I'm going to right click it, show all symbols. Here they are, and I'm going to look for the Canadian dollar, Swiss franc forex pair. Here it is, right over here. All right. I'm going to open my default template. Uh, I'm going to remove the default template. Oops, that's not the one actually that I was looking for. Uh, let me let me think of it. Just a second. Mm, currently looking for my the template that I want. Yeah, there you go. That's my favorite one. I, I like black with green and white bars, candles. All right. So we have the Canadian dollar. Uh, Canadian dollar Swiss franc forex pair. All right, so let's move to the four hour chart. See how things look over there. And now let's try to spot a pattern. Uh, all right, the interesting thing is that currently we're getting something similar that I was talking about. Take a look. 
So this is a bullish trend that is like uh, almost four times tested if we count this one, but I believe this is a valid test, although it was caused by like very high trading volatility, having in mind this barrier gap. So yeah, this trend line was tested. Let me zoom in. So it was tested once. All right, I'm going to zoom out. So it was tested once, twice, third time, and on the fourth time, the price hesitated and broke the trend, right? Here it is. I'm going to mark the breakout with a circle. All right, so this is the breakout. This is an indication that the price is very likely to change its direction, right? And suddenly, we're currently getting descending tops. Here it is. So could that be the beginning of a new trend, which is bearish? Eventually, we never know. However, this is, in my opinion, a scenario that uh, is worth approaching. So follow carefully the uh, Canadian dollar Swiss franc forex pair because it might lead to some nice trading opportunities. You never know. Now I'm going to go to some past data because this current example we are currently observing. It is currently happening and it is not a complete like structure. Uh, also the other important thing is that the like the last two bottoms are approximately not on the same level, but definitely the, the the bullish intensity of the price action is like lost, and the price is not that in intensive. Uh, so Ilya said bullish long term, very short term. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you. Uh, I mean, I agree with you having in mind the chart I was looking at. Yeah, definitely the the overall trend is bullish and the price created like a head and shoulders chart pattern right over here which did not uh, which was not confirmed meaning that the bullish like forces were definitely the stronger ones and the price is eventually correcting you cannot be sure until you see the price action being resumed again uh, because uh, a correction is identified as a correction when the bullish trend is resumed again in this case, we don't know because the bullish trend is not resumed yet, but since the smaller bullish trend is interrupted, we have sufficient reason to believe that since the price created descending tops on the chart, it might shoot for, for, uh, for, a, for example, for a bearish impulse. One bearish impulse or maybe two bearish impulses, you never know. So now I'm going to switch to like some past data. I'm going to switch to a smaller chart because the daily chart is like too big for this forex pair, having in mind the patterns I'm currently looking looking for. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. And I'm going to like, yeah, the auto switch needs to be turned off. All right. So currently approaching the chart. Let's try to, I, I'm trying to, I mean, I see this pattern like in many, examples in many cases currently however I'm trying to find something like more clear which will be easier for you to understand eventually not sure if this is something like that but I'm going to mark it for you just in case so notice that these are this is like a bullish trend that is not that steep uh, it is pretty horizontal and it's it's even a channel it could be taken as a channel here it is and on the way up the price has been creating ascending tops here they are, ascending tops and ascending bottoms. But suddenly, we see a breakout at the lower level of the channel and the price action suddenly creates descending tops. At the same time, um, marking this with orange, at the same time, the price action also creates descending bottoms. Here it is. Meaning that the price bounced off the upper level of the channel breaking the channel, creating first descending bottoms, then creating a top, which is like descending tops pattern, confirming the descending tops and bottoms pattern, meaning that this whole bearish move could have been traded like until you see a reasonable signal to exit the trade. Uh, all right, I believe that you probably got the point. 
Uh, also, I encourage you, whenever you have a question of any kind, don't hesitate to ask. I would love to interrupt the session just for a second, for a minute, and to answer each of your questions, guys. Uh, so now let me take down my chart and let's switch with the next point of the webinar, which is the candle patterns that are a very important component of the price action. So candle patterns are specific single candles or group of candles that are foretelling specific price behavior on the chart. So there are many, many uh, like known candle patterns that are like single candle patterns or double candle patterns or even triple candle patterns. They are even like, for, uh, I'm not sure if this is the word quadruple candle patterns or candle patterns that are formed by four candles. However, today we're going to discuss like the most important of them. Uh, probably you guys know most of these candle patterns, but probably you don't know some of them. So now I'm going to to go first through the some of the most important single candle patterns. Uh, and the first candle pattern I would like to discuss is the Hammer candle family. I say family because uh, the Hammer candle is not a single. I mean, it is a single candle. However, it has four variations that are known as a pin bar. So the Hammer candle has very small body and a very big candle wick from the from one of the two sides, either the the upper or the lower. In this relation, the Hammer candle pattern has four variations that are Hammer candle, meaning that the lower candle wick is very big, and we have a a small upper candle body, inverted hammer, hammer. Uh, the other very important thing is that the variations, the four variations of these, each of these candles, are different based on the location, on the, on the, on the place they take in the trend. So if the trend is bearish and you get like a pin bar, for example, a hammer where the, the lower shadow is big and we have a small upper body, this is a hammer candle. If we see the same candle but upside down again in a bearish trend, it is called an inverted hammer candle. If we have a bullish trend and we see another hammer that has a long lower shadow and small body in the upper side of the candle, it is called a hanging man. Uh, when we have the same hanging man pattern but upside down again during a bullish trend, we have a shooting star candle pattern. The important thing is that in all of the cases, the potential of this candle is reversal. So if the trend is bearish, you get a hammer, the trend is very likely to reverse. If the trend is bullish, you get a hammer, the trend is very likely to reverse and to become bearish. So take a look at the second picture you see, the right picture you see uh, on this slide. We have, in this case, a shooting star candle pattern, meaning that the trend was bullish, we got an inverted hammer, and the trend reversed. So this is an example of a shooting star candle pattern, because when an inverted hammer appears during a bullish trend, it is called a shooting star candle pattern. The dodgy candles, uh, the dodgy candles are, uh, it's again another single candle pattern, uh, which is uh, like identified by having the open of a candle at the same level with the close of a candle, meaning that whenever this certain price period has opened at the same exact level, if it closes at the same exact level, then you have a dodge. This is why the dodge looks like a dash. And take a look at the first image. Although this is not only a dodgy candle pattern, <laughs> It is actually another candle pattern. It consists, it has, it has a dodgy inside. Take a look. The small, tiny dash candle. Uh, dodgy candles uh, have few variations. However, whenever you get a dodgy, it has the same meaning, reversal. Otherwise, their variations of the dodgy were like a, like a gravestone dodgy, dragonfly dodgy. And a couple more, which, uh, which names I don't remember, honestly, currently. Uh, spinning tops and bottoms are candles uh, which usually have uh, like small body and long upper and lower candle wicks that are with the same size. Currently, I don't have like a spinning candle 
in front of you, but uh, when we go to the practical examples uh, session later, uh, like in 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to I'm going to try to find like some of the patterns that we're currently discussing. So the spinning candle that has small body and two big candle wicks upper and lower that are approximately with the same size. This candle is another reversal candle. Uh, and whatever you get it in a bullish or in a bearish trend, it's like meaning is the same. Reversal. That's what it is. So a couple of the more popular double candle patterns are the engulfings and the haramis. So we have an engulfing pattern when we have two candles first. <laughs> this is the first requirement. We have a two candles. Uh, the next requirement is that the first candle is smaller than the second one. And the third requirement is that the second candle fully, the body of the second candle fully engulfs the body of the first candle. Meaning that the body of the second candle is bigger than the body of the first candle and it fully contains the size of the first candle. The Harami pattern is absolutely the same, however, the two candles are switched. First we get the bigger candle, then we get the smaller candle. And the requirement is that the bigger candle fully, the body of the bigger candle fully engulfs the body of the small candle. So depending on where you get the engulfing or the harami patterns, they could be bearish or bullish. But the important thing is that wherever you get them, their feature and their function is reversal again, to reverse the price action. Some of the most important triple candle pattern are the evening, the evening star candle pattern, the morning star candle pattern, which are like uh, the same family, the tree inside up candle pattern, the and the tree inside down candle pattern, which are also the same family, and uh, another popular triple candle pattern is the three white soldiers and the three black crafts. All right, so the evening and the morning star candle patterns, uh, the evening and the morning star candle patterns first uh, look absolutely identical, uh, but upside down, like, uh, like I mean uh, the morning star and the evening star are a mirror image of each other, and not only of the shape of the candles, but also the direction of the candles. So, I'm going to start with the with the evening star candle pattern. So the evening star candle pattern appears during bullish trends and it starts with a big bullish candle, which is the first candle. The second candle of the pattern is either bullish or a dodgy. Uh, either bullish candle or a dodgy and it is like it should be like very very small. Sometimes this candle is likely to gap up from the first candle that is bigger. And then we need to get a third candle, which is in the opposite direction, which is bearish, which takes approximately half of the size of the first big candle. Or in more cases, it will, it will go even like, uh, it will take even more than half of the body of the first candle. So the morning star candle pattern is absolutely the same. However, the features of the pattern are upside down. So the morning star candle pattern, which you are currently looking at in the left image <laughs> with the dodge inside, the morning star candle pattern starts with a big bearish candle during a bearish trend. Nothing unusual, big bearish candle during a bearish trend. However, suddenly you get a very small bearish candle or a dodgy candle which sometimes could even gap down. And then the third candle is likely to be bullish and to go approximately above the midpoint of the body of the first candle. And this pattern represents something like a slowdown in the bearish pressure, which gradually turns into a bullish trend. So it is the same with the evening star candle pattern, however, in the opposite direction. So the three inside ups and the three inside downs candle patterns, these are like a little bit more strange and I, I, 
claim that they're a little bit more rare eventually. Uh, so the tree, oh, let me think for a second because sometimes sometimes I get confused myself. So the tree inside up and downs pattern are another triple candle pattern that starts, for example, the tree inside up uh, comes during bearish trend, starts with a big bearish candle, followed by a second candle that is bullish and it's approximately takes half of the body of the first candle and a third candle that goes above the body of the first candle. So in the three inside ups you have a bearish candle, a bullish candle that goes to the middle of the first candle and another bullish candle that goes above the body of the first candle. So this is three inside up. It, it is like, a, its structure is like similar to the to the evening and the morning star candle patterns. However, like the size of the candles is a little bit different and the rules are a little bit different. The three inside downs candle pattern uh, appears during bullish trends. It starts with a bullish candle, then a bearish candle that goes approximately to the middle of the body of the first candle, and another bearish candle that goes below the body of the first candle. So it's pretty much a mirror image of the tree inside of candle pattern. The third candle pattern family I would like to discuss with you, the triple candle pattern families, are the three white soldiers and the three black crowns. So this is like a very easy to recognize candle pattern and it, I cannot say that this is like a reversal candle pattern because it is not necessarily to be a reversal, it can also demonstrate that the current price momentum or the current trend is strong. So for example, the three white soldiers candle pattern consists of three bullish candles. One that is small, second that is bigger, and third that is bigger. And you need to look at the bodies of these candles. So a smaller, a bigger, and even bigger. The three black crowns candle pattern is absolutely the same, but upside down. It's, it's like uh, it starts with a smaller bearish candle, bigger bearish candle, and even bigger bearish candle. So the three white soldiers uh, tell us that the bullish trend is strong, or that the current bearish trend is weak, and there is a strong bullish momentum. The three black crows tell us the absolutely opposite things. They tell us that the current bearish momentum is strong. This means that if the current trend is bullish and you get three black crows, then this is very likely to be the beginning of a reversal. However, if the price is trending downward already and you get three black crows, this tells us that the current bearish momentum is even stronger than we thought and the bearish trend is very likely to continue in the same directions. Now I'm going to switch to some chart patterns. Notice that I did not outline with images chart patterns over here because I plan on switching my chart up after this slide and to discuss some chart patterns with you. And furthermore, chart patterns are like bigger and I can like hardly fit them. Flags and pennants, this is like when the price is trading and you suddenly see price hesitation or a correction. A flag is when the hesitation or the correction has rectangular shape and it is a pennant when the hesitation has triangular shape. Uh, triangular shape that is inclined in various direction, of course. Uh, flags and pennants have a bullish potential. However, there are also bearish flags and bearish pennants that are upside down that form with bearish trends and represent correction where the correction goes in bullish direction. Double tops and double bottoms, probably most of you know this, this chart pattern, where we simply get, like for example, let's say during a bullish trend, you get double tops which are approximately at the same level, and then the price breaks down, and this is very likely to be the beginning of a reversal. Double bottom is absolutely the same, however, everything, the scenario is upside down. You get a bearish trend and two bottoms that are approximately at the same level. The important thing that I would like to mention, and this is probably something that you might not know, is that when you get double tops or double bottoms, like the most authentic double tops and double bottoms pattern, uh, in the most authentic ones, the second top will be slightly below the first top. Which what means? It means that you're getting descending tops chart pattern. So, I mean, the perfect double top chart pattern will not have the two tops at the same level. The perfect double top chart pattern will have the second top a little bit lower. 
It's the same about the double bottoms, but in the opposite direction. The perfect double bottom chart pattern will have the second bottom slightly higher than the first bottom, which will hint that you're currently looking at ascending bottoms from the chart. Head and shoulders chart pattern is another famous chart pattern where you get a structure that simply looks like a head and shoulders. So this structure, like the bullish uh, variation of this pattern, I mean not the bullish variation, but the variation that appears during a bullish trend, this is important. Uh, it comes with a bullish trend, starts with a top, then continues with a top that is higher than the previous one, and then continues, uh, then the price creates another top that is lower than the second top. So you have uh, a low top, a higher top, and a lower top. So a top, a higher top, and a lower top. And you have left shoulder, right shoulder, and a head that is represented by the higher top on the chart. Uh, we also have the bearish, uh, the bearish variation of this chart pattern, which is the inverted head and shoulders chart pattern which is the absolutely same pattern, but it appears during bearish trends and it's upside down. So it is like a bottom, lower bottom, and a higher bottom. So triangles and rectangles, these are like easy to understand patterns. Sometimes the price action is simply not trending, it is consolidating, and it creates like interesting shapes on the chart. And a couple of these shapes are the triangle. The triangle and the rectangle. You have a triangle when the tops and the bottoms are not lined up with like parallel lines. And simply the tops and the bottoms are like uh, either uh, ascending and descending respectively, or they might be like both could be ascending or both could be descending. However, the, the important thing about the triangles is that they are not moving with the same intensity. So if the triangle is ascending, meaning that both tops and bottoms are increasing, uh, in order to have a triangle, the bottoms need to increase with higher intensity. And it is the same about the descending, the descending triangle. In order to get a descending triangle chart pattern, you need to have the tops descending with higher intensity. Rectangles, like uh, tops and bottoms, are pretty much like symmetrical. Nothing special over there. Uh, and then rising and falling wedge. Rising and falling wedge are actually ascending and descending triangles that I just like uh, that I just described. The truth is that rising and falling wedge they fall in the category of the triangles. However, uh, every rising and falling wedge is a triangle. However, not every triangle is a rising or a falling wedge. So this is why I decided to separate them under, under uh, their own point. So rising wedge, as I said, both tops and bottoms are increasing. However, bottoms are increasing with higher intensity. Falling wedge, uh, both tops and bottoms are decreasing. However, tops are decreasing with higher intensity. And now I suggest that we do some practical examples again, uh, where I'm going to show you some of these patterns that we just discussed. And I'm going to proceed with the American dollar, Canadian dollar, uh, for expert, as suggested uh, by Hatem Albana. All right, we have a chart over here. All right, let's now try to discover uh, like a pattern. I'm going to switch to a smaller chart because if I switch to a bigger chart, you will see some of my drawings, which are actually like, could be taken as like pretty nice patterns eventually. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing certain over here. These are like drawings that I use during the live analysis sessions. So now let's move through that chart. All right, so what's that? Is that a falling wedge? What is it? Yeah, here it is. So this is a very interesting pattern. Take a look at it. This is a falling wedge pattern. This pattern has strong bullish potential. However, since the pattern comes during a bullish trend, it's not only a falling wedge, it is also a bullish pennant. Here it is. This pennant has couple targets. The first target is to measure the size of the falling wedge or the pennant and to apply it starting from the moment of the breakout. See that the price broke and completed the first target. The second target equals the size of the pole. Here it is. 
However, this target was not completed. So it's not necessarily that the pattern uh, you always like uh, achieves both targets. The important thing is that this made the price increase and it sent the price to its bearish trend line. Here it is. It sent the price to its bearish trend line. The price tested the bearish trend line and bounced in bearish direction again. All right. Now I'll try to discover another pattern. Yeah, here it is. Another folding wedge right over here. I believe this is what it is. Or it, this is even maybe a flag. Uh, maybe it is a wedge. I'm not sure. Notice that the tops are decreasing. The bottoms are decreasing as well. It's like not sure if they're decreasing with the same intensity. I believe that the tops are decreasing with slightly higher intensity which creates the pattern. Uh, all right, so we have again, if we take this to be a pennant because we have a pole, now let's see if the price completed the two targets. First target equals the size of the pennant in its widest part, completed. Second target equals the size of the pennant pole. Is it completed? Uh, almost. <laughs> Almost, yeah, here it is. Uh, we see that there is some slight discrepancy between the target and the level that the price action achieved, but these are like normal events. You, I mean, forex trading is not like a, an, it's not like an accurate uh, subject or an accurate like science. It's not math. So most of the, not most, but all of the theories and stuff behind forex trading are based on like assumptions and theory. So this is uh, it, it is pretty normal that the price action uh, sometimes do not achieve like the target that we thought it will achieve, or sometimes uh, uh, like even creates a false breakout or something that can confuse us. This is totally normal, and uh, it is something that you need to get used to when trading. All right, so now let's try to discover some other pattern. I'm going to zoom out my chart so I have like a like a better picture. Yeah, this looks like an interesting triangle that is, I believe it's not completed because, I mean, we should not forget that we're currently looking at a very big chart time frame. Maybe I need to switch to a smaller one. So this is called a symmetrical triangle. So whenever the price breaks it, uh, since the triangle is symmetrical, uh, it does not hint like a, a certain direction. However, uh, whichever direction the price breaks through, it is very likely that the price continues in the same direction. In this case, the price started moving in bearish direction. However, things changed. Probably something like economic event appeared and changed the price action and the attitude of the traders. Since it is very hard to discover like uh, valid patterns on bigger charts, I'm going to switch to a smaller chart. I'm currently on the 15-minute chart of the American dollar, Canadian dollar, and I will try to find like a valid pattern for you guys. Hmm. Uh, all right, uh, let's try with, yeah, this is something that looks like a rectangle. Uh, here it is. Something like that. Notice that uh, tops and bottoms are approximately at the same level, especially the tops. Here they are. Tops and bottoms approximately go to the same level which means that after the price increase, the price started consolidating, hesitating which direction to take. And then since the rectangle got broken in bullish direction, this hinted that we're probably looking at, at a reversal on the chart. Here it is. All right, now let me try to discover something else that is interesting. Hmm. All right, browsing through the chart, browsing through the chart. Yeah, this is, for example, a clean, this is a clean example of a double bottom chart pattern. Notice that the price has been decreasing first. Here it is. Then the price created an increase after setting up a bottom. Then we saw a second bottom. On the chart, the price shot up and completed a double bottom pattern. How do we consider a double bottom pattern to be completed? First, we need to mark the top between the two bottoms 
with this line, which is called a trigger line or a neckline. Here it is. Then we measure the distance between the trigger line and the area around the two tops. And we apply it as our target. Here it is. That distance, that's the target. The confirmation of the double bottom chart pattern comes with the breaking candle right over here. Take a look at it. The breaking candle. So this could be used as a signal to buy the American dollar, Canadian dollar. Then you can trade for a minimum price move equal to the size of the double bottom pattern. Notice that in this case, we have like a pretty reliable pattern because the second bottom, as I said, is slightly higher than the first one. I'm going to try to find now uh, maybe some interesting candle pattern or head and shoulder pattern. I know where I can show you a head and shoulders pattern. Although it's not complete, I'm going to show it to you. And this is the daily chart of the euro dollar. As I said, the price broke a channel in bearish direction. Here it is. And during breaking the channel, the price is actually creating a head and shoulders pattern. Here it is. First shoulder. <laughs> first shoulder right here shooting star candle pattern. The price decreased afterward because the shooting star is a reversal candle, as I already said. Here it is. Uh, let's change some colors. All right. First shoulders, then the head that is higher than the first shoulder. Then we got the second shoulder right over here at the psychological resistance level at 1.2. This is an important thing, meaning that the 1.2 resistance level is a strong psychological level since the price three times tried to to create like a, a, a strong expansion through that level, but it did not succeed. Here it is. Head and shoulders pattern. And the confirmation of the pattern comes when the price breaks the neckline, it is called a neckline, that is located between the two tops, uh, that is located uh, that is used to connect the two bottoms in the base of the head. So this is the head, this is the base of the head right over here, the two bottoms in the base of the head. So now I'm going to change the color of that line. And whenever, whenever the price action breaks this red line, we'll have a confirmation that we have eventually a valid head and shoulders chart pattern. Now let me try to find, let's switch to the British Pound Swiss Franc because I have nothing, no drawings over here, just a clean chart, just a clean, clean, clean chart that we can, we can like, uh, we can observe. All right, so what is that candle pattern right over here? Okay. I think I'm currently seeing something. Um, and I believe that this might be actually, uh, this might be a morning star, but I'm not sure I'm going to show it to you. Just give me a second. Or maybe it's a tree inside up. Uh -huh. I think this might be a morning star action, although the price did not close above. No, it's not. It's not a morning star, or actually it is. You know what? If I switch to a bigger chart, to a daily chart, we're gonna have. No, that's not a good idea. This is like a very interesting case where the pattern is some kind of a mixture between like morning star and eventually tree inside up because we have like most of the morning star condition completed over here in the first three candles, this one, this one, and this one. However, we got like a fourth candle that went above the body of the first candle, which made us like, which creates the impression that this might even be like some kind of candle pattern mutation. At the same time, we have a hammer candle at the bottom. So there are like pretty many like uh, reversal signals on the chart. And this is, in my opinion, how you should interpret price action 
uh, because there is like you should always be flexible when interpreting price action. Notice that we had a bearish trend over here. We had a bearish trend, and after the creation of this strange pattern, that is either a, a morning star or eventually three inside ups or like four inside ups. I don't know. The price action broke the trend and then increased strongly. So this is like a very good example of how price action could reverse. Take a look. A strong bearish trend, strong bearish trend, the candle pattern over here accompanied by a breakout in the bearish trend and then we had a consolidation that could be like taken as, as a rectangle eventually or something similar. Consolidation, the price broke it in bullish direction and it is expanding even until today. So this is how flexible you need to be when like approaching price action rules. Uh, and I believe I managed to create some kind of a picture of how you need to interpret this stuff. So I'm going to switch to one last point of uh, this presentation, which is the psychology behind price action for trading. So the most important thing is to know that price action is a psychology-based approach to analyze forex pair. So every level candle pattern chart pattern or channel or a trend line or a triangle or whatever you want uh, on the chart, it represents the mass opinion or the mass confusion or the mass uh, attitude of the investors on the Forex market, on all of all the market players. So if you see, for example, like, um, let's say a big, uh, let's say a big hammer candle, a big hammer candle at the end of a bearish trend where the lower candle wick is very big and we have a small body of the candle. This means that there is some kind of a pressure at this exact moment, meaning that traders and market players are currently, currently pressured, meaning that they're either changing their altitude or uh, attempting to undertake something new. This is why the lower candle wick is very big because the price started initially moving started moving initially as suggested by the supply and the demand rules uh, that were created by the investors. However, a mass pullback appears, which means that somebody is eventually covering his trades over there. Somebody who is big or this is like a mass uh, uh, or something that is a mass impression. Maybe a lot of people are covering their trades, meaning that they are currently uh, like removing the the demand for one of the currencies and they're cre creating demand for the other currency because they're covering their trades, they're selling the currency that they had and they're buying the other one. This is why we have the big hammer candle and since this is happening, this is likely to create a pullback on the chart and a reversal. This is why chart patterns and price action trading are usually representing uh, like the altitude of the traders. So if the price is increasing and it is clearly following a trend line, uh, this trend line represents a level beyond which most of the investors don't believe the price will go. If the price breaks a trend, this means that the investors and the market players believe that this is the end of the price increase, let's say, and the price is likely to reverse. This means that a lot of people started, like a lot of market players have started covering their trades at that exact moment, which creates the price reversal and the eventual breakout through the trend. So all these rules and all these like uh, activities and occurrences on the chart could be, could be analyzed psychologically, which creates the existence of the chart pattern because every chart pattern represents some kind of a situation on the chart. This is why chart patterns, uh, I mean, they have rules. However, they are, of course, not 100% accurate. They're not even like 80% accurate. In most of the cases, good chart pattern, if you trade it in the proper way, properly, it will get accomplished like in eventually 60% or maybe 65%. This is, again, something that nobody could be certain about, but this is just general information that is uh, uh, that is widely available, and these are some of the important rules of, in the price action trading. The other thing that you need to know is that price action technical analysis of, 
is about being able to predict the direction of the capital flows, which is something that I uh, like a narrow limit just mentioned. This means that if you're able to predict the mass altitude of the market layers, you will know the direction of the capital flows. If you can predict the direction of the capital flows, then you can simply jump with the capital flows, meaning that you are going to trade uh, in the direction of the of the mass understanding about this certain forex pair. And when you're with the capital flow, this means that you are eventually riding a trend. And as you guys probably know, the most important price action rule sta states that the trend is your friend. And whenever you trade with the trend, this is likely to result uh, to result in eventually a good profit for your account. And because most of the traders that trade against the trend, they usually fail. So I suggest that we do a questions and an answers uh, session. And in the meantime, I'm going to launch a poll because I would like to ask you guys how satisfied are you from this webinar. So in the meantime, when you are thinking, when you are thinking about your question, I'm going to launch this poll. Here it is. And I would like you to vote from one to five how much did you like this webinar when where one is bad and five is excellent? So guys, please vote because we're trying to collect feedback for every webinar, which helps us improve uh, our sessions uh, in future. So I will give you like uh, 30 more seconds to vote. In the meantime, when you're voting, think of a question that you would like to ask me. Uh, I already see that there is a question. Yeah, there is a question from Paul. From Paul Clausius, I believe is the right way to pronounce uh, to pronounce his name. Uh, all right, guys, uh, about ten more seconds until the the vote is done. So feel free to vote, all of you. Yeah, Paul asks about the meaning of the head and shoulders pattern on the euro dollar chart. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to stop the poll now. Uh, all right, the poll is stopped. Thank you very much for voting, guys. All right, so head and shoulders pattern. First, I would like to go back to one of the slides of the presentation at the beginning of the presentation. So I will show you like a clean head and shoulders pattern. Here it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so just give me a second, please. All right, let's pop up the chart, and I'm going to, I think I will be able to find it, uh, the one that I drew, or eventually not. Was it? Yeah, here it is, right over here. So this was an image that you saw in the beginning of the, of the, of the presentation, and I wanted to show you to demonstrate uh, descending tops on the chart and how they can pressure the price action in various directions. So the most important thing behind the head and shoulders pattern, here it is with purple, is to know that this it represents a gradual switch uh, in the gradual switch in the altitude of the market players. Notice that the trend was preliminarily bullish. Here it is. So the price started crawling, then it created like a like a big distance between the trend line. It tested it one more time, second time, then the trend got broken. So this is where we need to be cautious. Let me remove this. Curious, because the price first created a top, then created a, like a higher top, which at first sight creates the impression that we have another impulse. However, the price breaks, and it did not manage to create a higher top, meaning that the price is gradually losing its bullish intensity. This means that the bullish players, the bulls, the buyers at the market are currently covering their trades. And notice that uh, the creation of the head is accompanied by this bearish candle, meaning that, take a look over here, I'm going to zoom in, we see that we have a strong resistance pressure 
uh, and where is that? Exactly in the area of the 1.15 resistance level, which is a psychological level because it's a round number. This is like a strong resistance level. The price started crawling over here, and then it suddenly dropped because most of the market players obviously did not believe that the price could go above 1.15. They thought this is probably like a climax, at the, like the highest possible. I don't believe that the Euro Swiss franc will go higher. This is why they started covering their trades, and the mass covering of the trades appeared right over here on, on August 4th. The price dropped, creating like a lower bottom. Uh, I mean descending bottoms over here. Whoops. Here it is. And then the, the proof of the, not a proof, but like the, the hint that this is what actually investors believed in came when the price actually created a lower top over here. This is why the head and shoulders pattern, its confirmation comes when the price breaks its neckline that is located in the base of the head. Here it is. Through the two bottoms, the price broke it over here, which brought the confirmation that the pattern is real and the price is very likely to decrease further. Then the potential of this pattern equals to the distance between the tip of the head and the neckline. Applied starting from the moment of the breakout. Fully completed. I hope I managed to answer your question, uh, Paul. Uh, so he says, uh, it seems sometimes it is a reversal and other times it's a continuation. So if I hear you correctly, it indicates a reversal, but from bullish trend. If the pattern is head and shoulders, yes. Meaning that it, when, when it's like in this structure, like a top, higher top, lower top, yes. It is in a bullish trend, it indicates reversal if the price breaks the neckline over here. However, the pattern has its... Uh, upside down twin brother that is called inverted head and shoulders chart pattern that is absolutely the same thing but in the opposite direction and I'm currently trying to find one for you uh, just give me a second uh, no this one is not mm, looking for an inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, looking for it. I'm going to zoom out the chart so I'm going to have like a better picture. Oh, double bottom right over here. A bottom, second bottom, phew, price increases. All right, so looking for an inverted head and shoulders spot. Uh, price anomaly is over here at uh, 2015, 15th of January, I believe. Exactly. Negative interest rates in, in Switzerland. This is what happened. Yeah, our charts got crazy. Yeah, another pretty double top pattern. Let me see if I, yeah, here it is. This is a pretty double top pattern. Price increase, double top, drop. This is how it works. All right, now let's see if I can find the inverted head and shoulders pattern for you. Uh, no, I'm going to zoom in the chart so I will have like more candles to approach. Switch to a 30 minute chart. Uh, can there be Elliott ways within, say, a head and shoulders? Yes, exactly. Exactly, you're absolutely right. Uh, Elliott waves could exist in head and shoulders pattern if, of course, the head and shoulders pattern conform to the rules. And usually, head and shoulders pattern appears. Uh, let me think about it. So, wave three is likely to be the beginning of the first shoulder, wave four is likely to be the correction that creates the first base of the head. Wave 5 creates the top of the head, and then wave A, which is the first reversal wave, is the second part of the head. And then wave B and C create the second shoulder and the eventual drop. You're totally right about this. Yes, Paul. Uh, inverted head and shoulder spots. No. I will try to find one for you. Just give me a second. Nope. Looking for it. Oh, what is this? Yeah, a triangle. All right. Looking for an inverted head and shoulders pattern for Paul because I want to show you how it works. Uh, scrolling the chart. Scrolling the chart. Another double bottom chart pattern. Here it is. First bottom, second bottom. Phew, price shots up. Notice that the second bottom is slightly higher. 
which uh, brings more reliability to that puppet. Uh, inverted head and shoulders. When I'm looking for patterns, I usually find them. However, this is like a pattern that has more requirements. This is why it is harder to find. And this is another head and shoulders pattern over here. Notice I, I found a head and shoulders pattern, but not an inverted head and shoulders pattern. So this is a price increase. First shoulder, base of the head, head, second part of the head, shoulder, second shoulder. Here it is, right over here. Head and shoulders. What was was this pattern completed? We'll see now. Neckline just built, measuring the size of the pattern. Oops, made it a little bit higher. Measuring the size, taking it, applying it, starting from the moment of the breakout. Fully completed. Here it is. A valid head and shoulders pattern again. Now let's see if we can find the inverted head and shoulders pattern. might be a tough thing to do. All right, however, since I, I'm not able to find it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm writing it in Google, and I will simply like, <laughs> I'm simply going to open an incognito window. Uh, inverted, inverted head and shoulders, here it is. Images, this is how it looks like. It. This is the structure, first shoulder, second shoulder, whatever. And this is how it approximately looks on the chart. Here it is. First shoulder, head, second shoulder, price breaks the neckline, shots up. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, guys, I hope I managed to answer uh, that question. Also, if you have another, if you have other questions, feel free to ask. I would love to answer you all if I can, if I can, of course. Uh, do not hesitate. Uh, in the meantime, when I'm waiting for some questions, I can simply like turn on my camera eventually. Voila, this is where I am. Uh, yeah, feel free to share with me if you can hear, if you can see me, uh, so I will know that the camera is working. And if there are not any more questions, um, maybe it is time to end this. Uh, yeah, all right. Paul says he can see me. So maybe it is time to end the webinar session. Uh, prepare for another live webinar on September 31st. I believe the topic is going to be about manual backtesting and forex trading. So you're all going to receive invitations uh, at your email. So make sure you participate at the webinar. And tomorrow in 10 in the morning, uh, New York time, uh, we're going to create a live analysis session again with me. And we're going to analyze some charts. So guys, if you want to discuss some charts, feel free to join into the tomorrow session. I would love to talk some charts with you. Also, I would like to encourage you to subscribe for our YouTube channel because we're like uploading couple uh, like uh, very high quality content videos where we explain different indicators and chart patterns. We also upload live trades and uh, other very useful like uh, tools for forex trading. So guys, uh, if you if you have any questions about this webinar, which I am currently recording, by the way, it's going to be uploaded in the webinar database, feel free to email me at, for example, support at forexbolt.com or simply write in the in the private trading group where we all communicate, all the members and the, all our mentors that were over there. Uh, we would love to answer your question, whatever you have. If something's bugging you in forex trading, this is why we're an academy and this is why we're here for you. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was Damian from ForexBolt.com, and I am looking forward to see you at the live analysis session tomorrow or in the next uh, live webinar that's going to be on September 31st. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye, and I'm wishing you a great day and a great week. Bye-bye.